Well, at this point, I think it's safe to say that Donald Trump is the next president of the United States. And it looks like rather than getting some form of quiet woman vote coming out, we got a loud dude vote. And it was pretty dang impressive. At the time of this recording, Donald Trump has a 91.9% chance of winning, according to Decision HQ, just 8.1% uh, for Kamala Harris. In addition to that, Kamala Harris's chances of winning here were based on the blue wall. If she was going to lose North Carolina and South Carolina and Georgia, which she essentially did, then she needed to maintain the blue wall. Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. All three of these uh, estates came out for Joe Biden. Uh, and at the time of this recording, with 86% of the votes in in Pennsylvania and uh, substantial portions of the vote in in Wisconsin and Michigan, Kamala Harris is way behind. All of these are red. There's no blue wall. And so the only wall that so far has been built has once again been built by Republicans. And you have a red wall, not a blue wall. And it looks like you're getting a Republican sweep. So we'll talk about some of the other items that are coming up here, but think about quickly what that means. All of a sudden it means taxes on unrealized tax, uh, capital gains have no chance of occurring. It does increase the likelihood that we're going to get tariffs on China or at least some form of negotiated tariffs with foreign countries. It does imply that we're going to potentially have markets price in more inflation because when you combine lower taxes, which gives people more spending money, with potentially tariffs on imported goods, you increase the costs while giving people the capacity to pay for those higher costs. Yes, you could slightly increase inflation and therefore inflation expectations will be likely to rise. Bond yields will be likely to rise on this, but you're also getting a rally in risk assets. Uh, you've got indices across the board up over 1%. You've got Dogecoin up over 24%. Gold is pretty much flat. Bitcoin ran up to 74,000. You're now at all time highs. Oil's down about 1% because probably people think that Donald Trump is going to expand. Maybe uh, we can bring back uh, 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 our Keystone XL pipeline extension. Maybe we can continue to frack or as Vivek likes to say, drill baby drill. These are going to be policies that we see under Republican and red sweep. Now, I'll be covering these every single day on the channel. And if you're part of the Alpha Report, you can also get your Alpha Report every morning at 6.15 a.m. texted to you, where you get a one-page update on Catalyst for options, stocks, bonds, crypto, historic volatilities, implied volatilities, macro updates, or even just trends that I'm seeing or things you want to pay attention to. You could easily just go to meetkevin.com slash alpha uh, and get yourself that report. But... Think about this for a moment. While Kamala Harris has not yet called in to concede, it is going to happen very soon. She's already asked the press to stop, uh, uh, you know, any coverage on her event from inside of her event. The anxiety is high and the quietness is uh, deafening. The silence is deafening, as we like to say. Uh, as you can see, the Electoral College is still being decided here. We can draw together a map here, but this is probably going to be a landslide. The Senate has already been called for Republican control, and uh, Republicans have already control of the House, and now they are gaining seats on top of that. So it does not look like you're getting any kind of blue resistance here. Although Circleback Saki has said that, hey, Californians, make sure you get out there and vote so we have a chance at, you know, maybe at least maintaining the House. This is unfortunately kind of a way of them suggesting, okay, yeah, lost the presidency. Is there anything you could do to stop Trump? And quite frankly, they've been trying to stop Trump for many years now. And it looks like America has voted. Now, this may not represent your views, uh, but at this point, America has pretty well dang decided that um, Donald Trump is the winner here. And uh, Donald Trump is presently heading to Palm Beach, a Florida convention center to address his supporters. So he'll be there speaking soon. 
You've got a, a watch party going on at Mar-a-Lago. Trump is there. David Sachs is there. Uh, Steve Wynn is there. Tucker Carlson is there. Pretty, pretty big. Now, uh, what we can do, just so you can kind of see this sort of landslide that's going on, is uh, when you remove this blue wall from Harris over here and you give this to Republicans, you have a landslide victory of 312 to 226 for Harris. Even if Harris ends up pulling out Pennsylvania, which was one of your most critical make or break ones, you're still way behind at just 290, uh, you're at 293 for Trump and Vance. Trump and Vance, frankly, they could lose, uh, uh, you know, Michigan as well here, and it'd still be a 278 to 260. Uh, and both of these right now are leaning red. So this is this is pretty much, oops, did the wrong one there. This is pretty much um, a done deal uh, at this point. But uh, let's let's consider some of the other things that we uh, learned or found uh, today. Uh, we learned that Florida denied legalizing marijuana. They denied abortion protections, legalizing those. Uh, that means you'll be stuck with the sort of six-week abortion ban in Florida. Cardano and risk assets are up. Cardano up 9%. Doge 24%. Solana up over 13%. Bitcoin up over 9%. Tesla on the Robinhood after hours up over 8%. You've got Adam Schiff. Trump likes to say shifty shift in California. Uh, winning his seat. The uh, district attorney who prosecuted Trump in Georgia did win her seat again. You had uh, Sherrod Brown losing his Senate seat uh, in Ohio to a Republican. That was one of the pip pickups there. Arizona is expected to get abortion protections. California rent control expansions denied. Uh, however, more criminal penalties uh, voted yes uh, so far in California. You've got, uh, honestly, a, a, lot of the, a lot of the exit poll data that I was looking at in terms of women, I was sort of tracking this over at ehack.com, uh, and a lot of it, I, I was expecting bigger moves from women in terms of uh, potential votes for Harris. I wasn't actually seeing those come up, seeing a lot more just male vote uh, for uh, Trump. Uh, Trump won certain counties like Anson County, first time a Republican won it since 1870, uh, first time in over 20 to 30 years that somebody won Miami-Dade County that was a Republican, that was Donald Trump. At the beginning of the day, I suggested that if Donald Trump wins Florida with a margin of more than 11%, he has an 80% chance of winning the entire election for the entire country. Uh, and let's, let's, let's be clear about this. I said 11%. If he beats with a spread of 11%, oh, some of my lights are going off because I'm not supposed to be streaming this late. <laughs> uh, if he beats with a margin of 11%, uh, he would end up uh, winning uh, with an 80% chance. His margin in Florida, you ready for it? 13.3%. Massive slam dunk. Uh, frankly, I think uh, also this sort of Republican sweep here, this red wave that you're seeing is probably really good for real estate investors as well. Uh, you know, lack of potential rent control, lower corporate taxes. It's fantastic for a company like Househack. If you want to invest in Househack, go to househack.com, uh, read our PPM over there. Uh, but I mean, landslide on this red wave over here uh, and red wall. Anyway, continuing with some of the other things that we had. Uh, or heard rather. Uh, we know that uh, treasury yields are up substantially, up about 12 basis points. They were up even higher earlier, but this is in part due to uh, people pricing in inflation under Trump. Again, what I described earlier, I actually don't think you're going to have a big inflation problem, which is good for risk assets as long as you don't go into recession, right? You don't want inflation and you want risk assets to go up, uh, obviously absent a recession which is still a possibility, right? But that's really a topic for a different video. Odds of recession, it's all going to come down to when seasonal workers are laid off and election workers are laid off. What does employment data look like in Q1? A lot of time to go between then and now. Right now, we just focus on the election. Uh, and the reality is it's, it's a decisive landslide. Uh, you've got, um, the Republican National Committee was complaining about a 31,000 ballot issue in Milwaukee. This is when one of the, uh, K 
cabinets to a voting machine uh, wasn't properly sealed, like the side door panels to it weren't properly closed. So they're recounting 31,000 ballots, even though they don't expect an issue. I don't think anybody expects an issue here. Republican National Committee, uh, Committee was not happy about it. They called it gross incompetence in the area. Uh, then you also had this Russian bomb threat where apparently over 30 bomb threats were called in to various different locations. Uh, Reuters is reporting that these were from uh, Russian email do domains. I mean, it just seems like straightforward that you would not use an, a Russian email domain, but whatever. Uh, and they targeted uh, areas like Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Wisconsin, all swing states. It is very common, by the way, for Russian actors uh, to try to influence elections uh, and create disinformation in America because the more disunity you get, the harder it is uh, to have unity in funding, let's say, Ukraine and, and, and foreign wars. Independent voters, by the way, accounted for 34% of the voter turnout. Uh, independent voter share exceeds one of the two major political parties for the first time since uh, Edison polling began in 2004. Wow, Democrats were 32%, Republicans 34%, Independents 34%. Wow, that's pretty incredible. Uh, Pat Toomey earlier called for a slight edge to Trump. Obviously, ended up being a lot more uh, than a slight edge for Trump. Uh, you've got uh, people worried about democracy on the election, the economy, the border. Uh, there were, let's see here, mm, and then we just get into sort of some polling from earlier in the day, which honestly at this point doesn't so much matter. Uh, but just to get the absolute latest, the predicted markets were essentially right. Uh, you know, the betting markets, you're at, uh, you've been pricing in Donald Trump for a while now. And quite frankly, you got 94.5% here in Pennsylvania, pretty impressive. Uh, you've got, uh, this is a presidential winner here. You've got, uh, this was Florida. Let's go look at Pennsylvania again. 86% expected in. And with 86% expected in, uh, you have a 2.8% margin on Trump, Pennsylvania, 6% margin, Michigan, 3.9% margin, Wisconsin, with 82% of the votes in. I mean, this is a pretty big move uh, for Donald Trump. Uh, and uh, also Republicans in the Senate and the House You've got uh, really the power now to to pass any kind of Republican legislature uh, legislation that you're looking for, uh, which could be tax cuts, uh, no tax on tips. Uh, you could have the extension of the Trump tax cuts, the uh, Tax Cut and Jobs Act, not only limited for those making under four hundred thousand dollars. Worth noting that somewhere around sixty percent of Americans benefited from the 2017 Trump tax cuts. And uh, there was a lot of uh, uh, talk that, oh, it only benefits billionaires or blah, blah, blah. blah. That didn't end up be, uh, exactly being true. So uh, then uh, then uh, we, we sent a few tweets. Uh, first of all, shout out to Lex uh, saying, I just called the election. Looks like Trump is going to win, but he posted that on, on my channel here. Just called the election. That was cool. Uh, so shout out to Lex. Really enjoy uh, watching his podcast too. But uh, what I wanted to show here was this. I wrote uh, some memes here. At this point, it's time for Harris to make a real phone call to Donald Trump, not a camera app call. This this is just a reference to uh, there was a clip of Kamala Harris. One clip, I got a picture of her actually on the phone with her phone on speakerphone. But in another clip, you actually had her on her camera app without the little green dot implying that she was on the phone. So I don't know if that was either like a glitch or something, but it did look a little bit sus uh, and not great. And uh, then uh, MSNBC also at one point complained that bomb threats were creating a, quote, aura of chaos and that these bomb threats, this Russian disinformation was interfering with Election Day. Uh, in case you're wondering, that was actually Rachel Maddow who mentioned that over on NBC. It was NBC. Uh, Circleback Saki, she was the one that said, hey, uh, go vote in California. There's still time. And uh, MSNBC at one point was also talking about we still have people standing in lines. Uh, I did actually tweet that about two hours ago. This was a photo of, we still have people in lines. So far, it does not look like the quiet woman vote did much here. Instead, we got the loud, younger Diablo 4 bros. Uh, and then there's Jen Psaki. And um, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, Her Kamala Harris campaign no longer giving comments to the media per Fox. It was about an hour ago. 
So uh, here you go. This is uh, Bitcoin uh, at this point floating around 74,300 and uh, what appears to be a pretty de decisive move uh, for uh, Donald Trump. Uh, so uh, something else to keep in mind is uh, if you have not yet, make sure you go on over to meetkevin.com slash alpha. Uh, we're, we're over 10,000 of you. Uh, I think well over at this point. But there are well over 10,000 of you that have already signed up for this free alpha report, your morning briefing by me. You can read more about the details about what's actually in the report by going to meetkevin.com slash alpha. If you're outside the U.S., click the little gray button. If you're in the U.S., click the uh, yellow button so you can get those SMS alerts as well. Don't charge you anything for it. Uh, so check that out. Uh, and then if you have not yet, also make sure you check out househack.com uh, where you have the opportunity to invest in uh, convertible bonds. Remember that Tesla did convertibles in 2014 because they convert to stock at some point in the future uh, and you get that upside or, or a good chunk of it. Uh, at Tesla's convertibles converted at an 800% gain. Now, no guarantees here, but check it out. You can read the PPM and agreements here. And you get a yield in the meantime as well. So uh, that's uh, that's the election. I do not advertise these things that you told us here. I feel like nobody else knows about this. We'll, we'll try a little advertising and see how it goes. Congratulations, man. You have done so much. People love you. People look up to you. Kevin Pafrath there, financial analyst and YouTuber. Meet Kevin. Always great to get your take.